Let's talk about OT ransomware, the new hot topic that you couldn't ignore over the last couple of months. What I want to do in this video is to focus on the reporting on OT ransomware, which I find misleading to say the least. Um, and we, we will go through that why. And after that, I give you my opinion on what I think you should worry about or, and, and what you should do about when it comes to ransomware in OT related environments. So let's just ri jump right into the reporting. Uh, just the other day, we learned about um, a, a ransomware attack on Schreiber Foods, which is a dairy company in Wisconsin or headquartered in, in Wisconsin. Cyber event knocks dairy giant Schreiber Foods offline amid industry ransomware outbreak. Industry ransomware outbreak, okay? So they're putting this in, in a broader perspective here, suggesting that there presently is a ransomware campaign ongoing in the dairy industry for which they unfortunately don't provide any evidence. <clears throat> so in this short article, the um, only reference to this recent attack against Schreiber is in the last two paragraphs. Um, the team has done an excellent job of restoring and rebuilding our systems. Congratulations, Schreiber. <laughs> Very good job. Uh, and, and I'll get back to that later, why I think uh, this cannot be emphasized enough when it comes to how to prepare against ransomware attacks. And then they're, um, they're, and then they're citing another, um, another, an, another news piece from the Wisconsin State Farmer, which reported that ransomware attacks sought 2.5 million. Let's go to um, this uh, Wisconsin State Farmer article which you see here. Schreiber Foods hit with cyber attack, plants closed. So apparently this is the authoritative reference on that particular attack. Milk distribution was in disarray in Wisconsin this week, blah, 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 blah. And now here is the kicker, what I want you to focus on. In the third paragraph, before we have learned about any details whatsoever, um, they are jumping again, to the, to the big picture here by telling us the cyber attack on the dairy processor came just as the New York Times published a front page article headlined, Russia restarts cyber operations despite rebuke. No shit Sherlock. So um, I don't know about you, but I, I cannot help but thinking this is intentionally put in there to suggest it's the Russians. Who else could it be? Um, so I think this is really uh, irresponsible reporting, if you want to call it reporting even, because it has, th th there is no confirmed link between those um, Russian cyber operations and this particular attack. So that is really not reporting, that is just um, trying, uh, that is fear mongering by association, you know. Somebody happened here at the same time, at the same time, something else happened over there. And because it happens at the same time and it's, it's vaguely the same topic, they want to suggest that, that this is or, or could probably be linked, for which we have uh, no evidence whatsoever. And um, certainly it goes on with the uh, fear mongering. This is serious as hell, said Pete Hardin. So this is our subject matter expert, the editor and publisher of The Milkweed, the National Dairy Monthly. Um, let's look at Pete Hardin. This is Pete Hardin. Um, he is editor and publisher of The Milkweed, which he started uh, in 1979. This is the homepage of The Milkweed. So this is his... Um, his, I don't know how to call that, blog or whatever. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm just suggesting this guy, um, no offense, but he might not be your most credible expert when it comes to cybersecurity issues and OT security. Let's move on. Um, then we um, are reading in this magazine here, 
Rise of ransomware. Why OT is a prime target for cyber criminals. Let's think about that for a second. Why OT is a prime target for cyber criminals. I really want you to, to think about that for, for a couple more seconds here, what they are doing. It is actually, it's, it's not reporting, it's not about news, it's about persuasion. And I'll tell you why. So they're using a persuasion trick, which is usually referred to as making you think past the sale. The sale is that um, OT is a prime target for cyber criminals, for which we don't have any evidence. And um, the, they do this by with, with focusing you on, on something that's beyond that, by focusing on the potential reasons or the alleged reasons. So why is that the case? If you're, or when you focus on the why, you have already accepted the, the first premise as a fact that OT would actually be a prime target for cyber criminals for which there is no evidence and I'll get back to that later. And uh, as you would expect, um, also in this article, there is really no meat. There is no substance in this article as far as uh, OT ransomware attacks are concerned. And you can, you can see that right away in the second paragraph here, uh, where they are um, citing an example. Uh, according to a recent report from Sonic, blah, 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 blah. Earlier this year, we saw this play out right before us with a foreign exchange company, TravelX. TravelX doesn't operate any operations technology. So, so that is totally unrelated. And um, they just assume that, that you don't realize this and, and just uh, buy their premise that OT is a prime target for cyber criminals. Let's move on here to speed things up. Um, why are ransomware attacks against OT increasing? Asks Tripwire in their State of Security um, magazine or whatever you want to call that. Um, and to their credit, you know, uh, this is by a guest author. Uh, this, this piece is by uh, Emily Newton and uh, Tripwire specifically points out that the opinions expressed in this guest author article are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect those of Trip Tripwire. Tripwire, I have to tell you, if, uh, if you don't agree with, with those opinions, why don't you publish them in the first place? Why, why did, did you probably even pay in order to, to, have, to get the rights to publish this? So again, uh, what I want you to focus on is the framing here. Why are ransomware attacks against OT increasing? It's the same as in the other article, think, making you think past the sale. Um, if, if you start to wonder about why is that the case, so let's, let's figure out by reading this article, then you have already accepted the premise that ransomware attacks against OT are in fact increasing. That is making you thinking past the sale. That's, that's um, really not reporting, that's just persuasion. And um, it, it, it gets funnier, <laughs> bear with me, <laughs> hear me out. Um, so if we um, read this article here, um, in the second paragraph, uh, apparently most, most interesting things happen in the second paragraph in all these articles. In June, for instance, the, the, the CISA released a fact sheet about ransomware attacks on OT. The publication references a growing trend of ransomware targeting these systems. Well, now it gets really interesting because they are referencing an authoritative source which you could call CESAR, right? And um, now let's do just a, a litmus test. So we um, go to this fact sheet by CESAR. This is the fact sheet, rising ransomware threat to op operational technology assets. And um, first thing you see, well, it's also, it's quite thin, right? You know, it, it doesn't really, go through, go to um, the details of this new trend, you know, or, or why that threat would be rising. No details here. And the best thing is, you remember, um, Tripwire's guest author was pointing out that trend that was described in this, um, in this paper here, 
And if we search for trend, there is no hit. So the term trend isn't even mentioned in, in this uh, whole piece here. Uh, in other words, you simply have been fooled. How funny is that, right? And I just want to um, inoculate you regarding this type of uh, fear-mongering. Um, and this is what, what really increased over the last couple of months. This is what you, what you can point out with, uh, with evidence. You can substantiate this, that uh, vendors and the media are trying to work you up with an alleged trend with the idea that um, OT is getting targeted specifically by those ransomware groups. Okay, so um, I want you to keep that in mind. Uh, I think it, it will increase over the last uh, over the next uh, couple of months because um, apparently industry vendors and the media have realized well, that, that this resonates with the audience, that, that they can use this to scare people. So let's um, think about what the threat really is or what OT ransomware really is and how to put it in perspective. Here are my thoughts. I think you should first ask yourself, what is OT ransomware? What would that be? It would uh, imply the idea that um, OT systems are um, disrupted, are manipulated uh, up to the point where uh, you cannot continue operation or um, at least not safe operation so you have to shut down the plant and in order to remedy the situation uh, you are pressed uh, to pay a ransom to the attackers. So let's just quickly review. Does that actually work with OT systems? In other words, to, be, to get more specific, uh, would it be possible to encrypt the letter logic on a PLC or the configuration on protective relays? The simple answer is no, that is not possible. You cannot do that. So that leaves us for, for the, this um, classical approach to, um, that is used by ransomware operators and platforms. So you encrypt uh, um, all the essential files on a Windows machine and then you um, demand the ransom. This is only possible on Windows boxes. It is not possible on switches, on RTUs, on PLCs, on sensors, actuators, and so on and so on. That leaves us with the, um, with the bottom insight that technically, an, an o, a ransomware attack in an OT environment doesn't really look any different from, an OT, uh, from a ransomware attack in an IT environment. So the, the only difference would be that those Windows boxes are used for different purposes. Um, that's one thing. So uh, if only for this fact, I think it is not really um, insightful to, to actually use the term OT ransomware. Um, the other thing is the idea that attackers would specifically target OT en environments, OT systems, which I also find totally not credible, and I'll tell you why. If you look at ransomware operations so far, well, what we have seen so far, every ransomware let me, let me retake that. I, I don't want to talk in absolutes here because some smart ass on Twitter could say, no, no, but, but in this example, it was different. So, so most ransomware attacks are tot totally opportunistic. They start with an opportunistic phishing attack uh, where the attacker simply check out where they could gain a foothold in, in some uh, interesting target, okay? And interesting simply means a company or an organization um, which would be able, factually be able to pay a reasonable ransom, reasonable in terms of the business model of this whole industry, of the ransomware industry, which means seven digits. That, by default, would exclude the majority of uh, small um, 
water utilities, you know, all those mun municipal water utilities, like in, in Old Smart, Florida, where we have seen well, they really don't uh, have their act together when it comes to securing remote access. Um, and I would bet that, there, that those um, um, targets are hit regularly by ransomware operators. However, they, those operators, those attackers will probably not pursue an attack because they already know, you know, th th those poor folks in, in Oldsmar and, and elsewhere, they don't have the budget to actually pay the ransom. So therefore, they're focusing on bigger targets where um, they can really extort something reasonable. And this is then, so this is the, the stage where the attack moves from opportunistic to targeted. But the targeting is not what, uh, what the media suggests, that the attackers would specifically try to focus on OT where they can cause supply chain disruptions or that they would focus on critical infrastructure um, because uh, they are evil guys and they want to destroy the economy or whatever. No, they, they just want to make a living. Um, unfortunately, they didn't figure out how to do that um, with um, legitimate uh, and uh, with legitimate means so <laughs> they uh, they uh, reversed uh, they reverted to criminal activity um, so here is the thing if you remember the colonial pipeline hack which i think you do <laughs> because it was the major event in recent history the attackers stated in clear language that they didn't mean to cause harm to civilians, etc., to all those customers who had to pay more for the gas, etc. You know, <laughs> I still get tears in my eyes when thinking about that. So they, they portrayed themselves as something like a Robin Hood character, which certainly is totally bizarre. And I've pointed, I, I've, um, I've put my opinion on that on the record in a different video. However, I think if you want to understand ransomware gangs, you should best um, imagine them like, like the, that classic um, quote from, I think it's from uh, The Godfather. You know, it's nothing personal, it's just business before they, they uh, kill a guy. You know, they, they do the whack job on somebody. You know, it's, it's not t totally not personal, just business. You know, don't, don't be offended. Uh, uh, we have to do what we have to do. I think this is how this industry, this, the ransom in, ransomware industry really operates. They don't care. Uh, and and so, so certainly they also don't care about any uh, really nasty side effects. So if you think about um, the many ransomware attacks that we have seen against hospitals, they, they don't care. It's, it's only about the money. So, you know, don't blame them. They also have to make a living. I'm, I'm speaking tongue in cheek here. This is certainly my, my cynical take on things. I think these um, bastards should be punished with the uh, uh, largest, highest amount uh, of what, uh, what the law offers. And they should also be ch chased down, but that's a different story. And I, I think that's an, an evolving um, thinking here that you should really go, or we, we all should really go harder after these criminal gangs. Anyhow, that, that's a different topic. What I want to... Uh, to focus on in this last past part of the video is what you should actually do about it. So don't get me wrong with all I have said so far. I'm not dismissing ransomware threats against um, companies, organizations which rely on OT. That is not my point. I do think it's uh, the, the biggest threat on the table, but it's, it's not a specific OT threat when it comes to you know, the targeting, uh, the type of systems that are attacked, how these attacks work, I think that is pretty much sim similar to what we have seen in IT. But there are some differences, and, and this is what I'm going to talk about right now. So first of all, in, uh, my advice is, if you are concerned about ransomware in OT environments, and I think you should, let's be totally clear about that, you should be concerned about that. The first thing that you should do is not uh, reading the latest reports on threat intelligence, etc., but to um, get your incident response up to snuff. And that is what the majority 
of asset owners that I have some insight in, uh, what, what they lack to do. They don't have their incident response procedures up to snuff. And, and the irony is that this is something that you could do comparatively easy. What do I mean by that, by incident response procedures? I'm, I'm not talking about forensics, etc. I mean, who cares about forensics when uh, you, you wake up to find all your, um, your project files encrypted? It, it's, it's an, the last thing that you're going to worry about is to identify who did that and how did they do it. That is not your concern. Your prime concern is to restore uh, system functionality ASAP, which often means within a couple of hours. And, and this is then the litmus test. How many time do you need to recover critical systems from scratch? By from scratch, I mean, you know, here is, a, here is an empty VM. Here is your backup files and now hit the timer, hit the stopwatch, and, and let's see how long that takes before you are, uh, you, you are able to get your operations up again. And um, then you might experience something weird. Backups? Where, where are the backups? Do we have backups? When, when did we do the latest backup? Uh, did we check if we can restore the latest backup properly? Oh, no, we did not. Hmm. So these are all the things that are going to happen when you get serious about your incident response. And this is what I want you to change. And again, let me be very clear about this. This can be done rather in a simple way and in a systematic way. It usually starts with enumerating your critical systems, the stuff that, that you really need, and, and I'm mostly talking about your Windows boxes here, because as I said earlier, all the other stuff, the PLCs, etc., they, they are usually not affected directly by the ransomware or by the encryption procedures. So you identify what you absolutely need, and for those critical systems, you make your contingency plans. And those contingency plans should contain a detailed procedure on how to restore system functionality. And as a side effect, you would make sure that um, your backup procedures are in order. Um, the, the detailed procedure in the contingency plan should be executable by shift personnel. You know, because <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, and, and, you know, the, and you will be struck at the most inconvenient time, like on Christmas Eve or whatever. You know, like when, when you're, all your experts, the, the real pros, they're unavailable. So the poor guy, the shift operator who just <laughs> came in as a replacement last week, now he has to save the day. He or she has to save the day. And guess what? That, that would actually be feasible in most cases if you have decent um, procedures, a decent contingency plans for, for system restoration. So that is my advice. That should be priority number one. And this is something that you could literally start this week. So the, <laughs> nothing needs uh, to be accomplished before you start writing your contingency plans and get your incident response procedures in order. And then the second priority that I would place is to review your access control policies, which in OT environments are also usually lacking um, scrutiny, <laughs> to, to put it very mildly, okay? And uh, this is a, a problem that is typical for OT, and, and now it, I think it gets more interesting. Um, I think over time, ransomware attackers will figure out the Achilles heel of OT. <laughs> the, you know what the Achilles heel is? It's weak access control when it comes to contractors. Um, so we are talking about insecure remote access points, if we have seen it in the old smart attack, as, as so many more times before that and that is contract to laptops. And, and so the, the tipping point will come when ransomware operators identify, well, you know, 
we, we were fools all these days when we tried to crawl into those large companies through their, their three firewalls and their intrusion detection systems. We were, we were dumb fools because all we need to do is we need to identify a handful of uh, interesting contractors, third parties, which usually don't have um, a really, let's just say, contemporary uh, cybersecurity procedures in effect especially when it comes to infiltration opportunities. So we, we should just um, hack uh, a couple of those. And uh, guess what? You know, they enjoy legitimate access um, to all those juicy industrial targets. And then with their laptops or their USB sticks, etc., they will infiltrate for us. They, 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 are, they will act like a mule. Um, as we have seen it in Stuxnet, certainly. So, and, and so far, unfortunately, the ransomware operators didn't figure that out. But um, I'm afraid at some time in the future, they will. So that is my second priority. Um, you should review your access control procedures for remote access and for contractor access in general, including on-site visits by contractors with their laptops and with their USB sticks, their malware-infested laptops. Do, do you even have any idea how many laptops you're talking about in your specific case? And do you have any idea what is on those laptops, you know, to start with operating system version at the least? Okay, so that is uh, what I wanted to share um, about OT ransomware and especially about this whole discussion that is now ongoing. I think to some extent the discussion is not a bad thing per se. It focuses you on the problem. Unfortunately, it focuses you uh, or it, it tries to manipulate you to, to look in the wrong direction, but I try to correct that from, from uh, my perspective. And... Um, let me know what you think. Uh, do you agree with my opinion or do you think that's total nonsense? Uh, let's just stick with the fear mongers. Please share your opinion in the comments below. Thank you for watching.